This course is Cradles of Civilization. And we're going to trace the uh, history and development of the cradles of civilization, essentially of Western civilization. By the way, um, there was an advanced civilization in a place called Mohenjo-Daro in India, which is uh, in now in the area of Pakistan, India, around the um, shores of the uh, uh, Indus River. About Chinese civilization, what we do know is that uh, despite uh, the usual, uh, what shall I say, publicity of China as being the oldest civilization, um, the Chinese calendar, I think, goes back 4,000 years. The Jewish calendar goes back 5,000 and uh, 760 years. The Jewish calendar, I'll explain later why it goes back to that particular number. But the Jewish calendar reflects more accurately um, the rise of uh, the historical period, or the beginning of the historical period. Now, uh, what we do know about China is that writing in China does not start before 1400 BC, which is a 2,000 years later than it starts in the cradles of Western civilization, which we will discuss here. So in Western civilization, which begins not in Greece and Rome, but begins actually in Sumer and Babylon and Egypt, as we will see, uh, the historical period begins, that is, writing is invented, and writing begins, and it's only since the beginning of writing that we can actually have a record, and so that is the beginning of the historical period. That starts around 3500 B.C. Now, uh, I put up this map uh, to give you a geographical perspective. The cradles of Western civilization are three points on this map. They are the mouth of the Tigr mouths of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. The Tigris and Euphrates rivers are in Iraq today. Uh, the Greeks called the area Mesopotamia, which means between the two rivers. And within this area, we have the civilizations of Sumer and Akkad, Akkad and then Babylonia, and further north, Assyria. That is one of the cradles of civilization and the earliest. The second one, almost contemporary, about the same time, perhaps a few hundred years later, is in the Nile Valley in Egypt. The third is in the Jordan Valley, which is a very small area. And it is out of here that that civilization, which the Greeks called Phoenician, uh, developed. Uh, Phoenicia in Greek is called Canaan in Hebrew. And that's the native name of the place. The Canaanites, or the people of Canaan, are the Phoenicians, uh, as the Greeks call them. And their civilization embraced the land which is now Israel and Lebanon the eastern seaboard of the Mediterranean. So here are the three, the three cradles of ancient civilization. The Tigris-Euphrates Valley, the Nile Valley, and the eastern seaboard of the Mediterranean, uh, perhaps beginning in the Jordan Valley. Because in that area, uh, Kathleen Kenyon, who's one of the leading archaeologists, Kathleen Kenyon discovered the earliest, the earliest city walls. So there we have these elements of the beginning. Now, in teaching history in the Western world, uh, it has always been the tradition to start with Greece and Rome. But the fact is that before Greece and Rome, these three civilizations had already achieved a very great height. And even from the Greek histories, we learn that um, their scientists, their early, earlier civilizations, the scientists used to go to Babylonia and to Egypt in order to study advanced science. The problem is that until the 19th century, 
We didn't have much information on these earlier civilizations. Uh, the only good source, we had two sources. The good source was the histories in the Bible, and I consider the histories in the Bible to be very, fairly reliable, very reliable. But it's a limited source. And another one would be the history of Herodotus, the Greek historian who wrote in 450 BC. And he has some very interesting information, again, very, very reliable information. Beyond that, we have very little. But in the 19th century, uh, scholars began to work on deciphering the writings of the Babylonians and the Egyptians. And Babylonian and Egyptian writings uh, pro provide us with a voluminous amount of information. The only thing is that until they were able to decipher these writings and understand how to read them, there was nothing we could know. But once they succeeded, then the whole history of the earlier history opened up. And today, since there are quite a number of scholars who can read Babylonian cuneiform without difficulty, and there, are, uh, there were uh, remarkable achievements by Sumerian scholars and also by Egyptologists. We have a very good record of history going back to the beginning of the historical period, that is, to, be to the beginning of writing. Now, you know, writing is one of the, one of the great creations, one of the great inventions in the history of human civilization. And it's interesting because uh, intelligent human beings, uh, Homo sapiens, have been around for 50,000 years or more. And we know some of their works, I mean, the, the cave paintings in Altamira and in Lascaux. These are remarkable paintings made by gifted artists uh, who quite clearly uh, <laughs> knew and understood and could express themselves but they could express themselves in painting and in sculpture, which is what they left us. The whole notion of being able to create symbols that would represent the spoken word, this was something that uh, eluded them for thousands of years. Until the rise of the highly developed civilization, which occurred on the banks of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in this region and along the banks of the Nile in Egypt, and along the banks of the Jordan and the eastern seaboard of the Mediterranean. Now, to trace the development or the rise of civilization, these are the things that we know. Uh, after all, we know a lot about the, what we call the Paleolithic period, the Old Stone Age. And that is the period of human development when uh, Homo sapiens was around, I mean, highly intelligent people, uh, but they uh, were essentially people who had to uh, hunt and uh, gather food, hunt for food and gather food. This was their way of life. In a sense, you could say they were just on the developmental level. They were above uh, animals. And of course, they could organize themselves and they could speak to each other. So they had this great advantage of speech and also the advantage of being able to create effective tools, because on the paintings of Altamira and Lascaux, you see warriors, you see people actually using bow and arrows and spears. So obviously, they were uh, capable of creating tools. And we know from their tools that they had uh, an effective group of tools, but they are what we call Old Stone Age, or rather, from our point of view, primitive. Nevertheless, they were effective. I mean, they used sticks, and they used bones, and they used stones uh, tied to sticks. And they, were able, they had clubs, and they had bows, and arrows, and spears, and knives, many things. But they were still in what we call the Paleolithic period, namely uh, not settled, and essentially having to move, uh, being in nomadic groups, in order to maintain themselves.